Hi, I'm David Blanco with Los Blanco Cigars. It's a pleasure to be here with you at the uh, 2009 IPCBR show here in lovely New Orleans. If you can hear the thunder and rain above us, it's not quite uh, as sunny as we'd like it to be. We've got a lot of uh, serious buyers here uh, and tobacconists that uh, know what they're looking for and can appreciate good cigars and good tobacco. And uh, we have plenty of that at our booth with uh, some of our new products as well as some of our stable products that we've had for a few years now. So tell us about what's new. Well, we have the Los Blancos 9, which is our full body product, full body cigar, our new product. It's a Habano uh, Escudo Corojo wrapper. It's grown in Nicaragua. We have, uh, with the filler binders, they're uh, triple ligero, uh, all from Nicaragua as well. So it is definitely a, a rich, full body, full flavor cigar, but not overbearing that it blows up and is a lot of, of picante taste or, or peppery taste, uh, spice in your mouth, as one would think when I say triple ligero. Uh, the reason for that is we use very young primings of ligero, so we have a lot more fuller flavor, fuller taste without all the heat that typical ligeros uh, that are of older, older age or older primings uh, have. Uh, and let's take a look at the uh, product here. That would be our double Corona box, uh, 7x52, holds 25. We have uh, five, uh, four other sizes available, Robusto, Toro, Torpedo, and Lancero, 7x38. Very happy with that cigar, got a great review and uh, profile in Cigar Press uh, Magazine, the current issue. So if you guys happen to get your hands on it, uh, please read that uh, review. It's, it's a great, uh, great opportunity to learn a little bit about the profile and see if you're interested in trying it. Kind of do a bit of a balancing act yourself with your brand. Some are sold exclusively in stores, some are in the catalog. How do you, how do you manage that, or how do you see your business model changing? Well, uh, in terms of uh, maybe combining the two somehow. Well, the, the the trick is trying to keep a level playing field for everybody. Um, retailers, tobacconists are the are the people who build brands, and that's where our loyalty lies and always has lied. Uh, however, as of this past year. We've come to a, an arrangement with Famous uh, Smoke Shop, uh, who is also a retailer, has a shop, but also has a catalog side uh, that we allow them, since they are a retailer, to sell our product not only in their shop but in their catalog. And the balancing act, like as I said, is keeping a level playing field. We, we do a little price control with that to ensure that they are not, uh, as catalogs tend to do, most catalogs, with the exception of Famous, that's why we have the agreement with them, they discount tremendously uh, to the point where it's uh, an uncompetitive edge uh, or that it is to say retailers are unable to compete as a result of either OTP tax, state tax, uh, and of course S-chip on top of that. It's made it impossible for retailers to compete with some catalog companies. Famous is not one of those, and that's why we choose to do business with Well, with, with all the, I mean, you, you just brought up, uh, you know, the taxation and, and, uh, and, and all this sort of a thing. With, uh, with the way that the climate is changing from a taxation standpoint, okay, from an anti-smoking sentiment standpoint, uh, there's a very vocal minority out there. What, what are some of the things that you guys are doing to, um, you know, to deal with those, with those pressures? Well, uh, we are members of the CRA. We're one of the founding members of the CRA, which is the Cigar Rights of America organization, which is a mouthpiece for not only, and it was never meant to be a mouthpiece for uh, manufacturers or even retailers, it's more of a consumer-based organization that is now actually branching out and becoming that as membership and awareness grows of that organization. So we're happy to be founding members of that. Uh, it, it's about rights. You know, cigar smoking is one of those, but in our country, it seems that individual and personal rights are eroding in many different formats and, and, and areas. Of course, ours that we're in business with and that we enjoy is cigar smoking. We're trying to protect those rights, with not only uh, uh, the issue of legislation with regard to taxation, but legislation with restriction of where you can smoke. So we're trying to combat that as well. Uh, as far as what we're trying to do to make cigars that are as uh, value-oriented as possible, for the retailer, what we do is we itemize tobacco that we sell them versus the packaging that we sell them versus that the, uh, the S-chip. If we lump that all together, the state requires, most states require, uh, that they pay tax on all of that product as the base wholesale price. So what we do is we try to separate everything from the tobacco that's actually being supposed to be uh, taxed. So as to lower the overall tax, which is then factored in to the retail price that the consumer now has to pay. How, how big so, of a difference is it on, is huge. on a given box? Huge. It can be uh, anywhere from um, 
five to ten to fifteen dollars, depending on the price point of the cigar. Not only my my cigars, but others. It all it's all based off the wholesale cost of the cigar. Okay. So you have you know prices of cigars that can range anywhere from two to three to four to five dollars, where the impact isn't as much. But they can also go up to 15, 20, 25 dollars. Now you're talking hefty margin. Uh, S chip alone is a 41 cent increase. Um, but if you multiply that by 25, which is a box, now you're talking ten dollars and 25 cents. That's just the federal excise tax. Some states have 75 percent. Other states, I mean, like the Northeast have up to, up to 75%. I believe Washington State is 75%. Uh, California is 40-something percent based on the wholesale. That's in addition to the S chip level. So you can now have double that issue of the 41 cents. Now it's almost, instead of 41, it's 82 to a dollar. So now a do that's a dollar a cigar just in tax. It could be even more depending on the, the price point of scale. Gotcha. So this is kind of a neat innovation, so it's a way for you to, to help protect the, uh, the, the the end consumer. Correct. Uh, by protecting the retailer a little bit. Absolutely. Look, tax for the for not only S-chip, but for any of the federal tax, the tobacco tax is what it is. Tobacco tax. Not wood tax, because the, the box is made out of wood. Mm -hmm. it, it, it has nothing to do with any other the packaging, the promotion, or the shipping charge, or any of that. It's strictly on the cost of the tobacco. Okay. So if I add now the federal excise, the federal S chip bill, if I add that into the overall cost of the unit, now all of a sudden that's seen as part of tobacco. It's not. It's tax. If I lump it in and I don't itemize it separately, you're paying tax on tax. But now it's incredible. And in some states, they're trying to actually legislate to make sure that that occurs. So without naming names, are there, are there other uh, manufacturers who have, who have kind of adopted yes. this policy? Yeah, well, we're not all doing it yet. But m many of them have seen that that is a, becoming a problem. And it's making it unruly. That, or their MSRPs are now becoming way in excess of what they expected them to become. So we're finding ways. It's not a loophole. We're not looking to not pay the tax that's appropriate. We're just looking to pay the tax only on what the legislation was about, tobacco, mm -hmm. nothing more. For those of you that uh, enjoy Los Blanco cigars, I hope to see you out on, this, on the road uh, as I am um, frequently traveling the country doing events throughout the United States. Uh, in fact, I'll be at Famous Smoke Shop to give them a plug since I'm going to be there very soon in September. I believe the date is the 26th. Uh, I will not be there personally in that case because I'm still a U.S. Army reservist. I have a month commitment uh, to the military, and it's during that time period. But my father, the president of Los Blanco Caesar, Blanco will be at the shop oh, great, uh, great. to do uh, it, as good a job, if not better. I mean, he is my father, and he is the president of this company. If there is somebody to, to substitute and take my place, he is the one that uh, it should be, and, and he's happy to go and do that. So, if not, my father, myself, uh, we're throughout the United States. Check our website out at losblancos.com. Uh, or El Primer Mundo, since we also distribute that product now. And uh, you can check to see where we're going to be at a, at a shop near you. We also have tours down to the factory open to the public. The website for that, if you'd like to go ahead and reserve a trip, uh, we have one week out of the month that we go down to the factories in Nicaragua and Honduras both. It's worthlivingtours.com. Very uh, inexpensive trip. It's all inclusive, five days, four nights. And for those of you that are real uh, fans of the industry and like to see how this all originates and where it starts and how it comes, becomes what it becomes to be in the shop that you purchase your product from, that's an opportunity to learn how to eat not only blend the cigar, roll a cigar, smoke the cigar, and learn all about the process in between from seed to shelf. Okay. So that's all. Yeah, it's a great time. All right. Well, thanks, David. I appreciate your time, guys. Thanks, right. guys. Okay.